Welcome everybody to Farmhouse Fabrics. We are so thrilled to have Joe Rosdick with us today. And um, Joe came with a beautiful wall of garments that she has made over the years. And so I told her I wasn't going to ask her any hard questions. <laughs> But I'm so interested to know a little more about Joe. I'm just going to tell you a couple of tidbits. I know that that Joe owned an heirloom shop at one time. I know that she has a degree in art, and I know that she taught art to children for 50 years. Did you say 50 oh, years? Oh, 50 years. Yeah. That oh, yeah. she now teach. She's she's had enough of children, <laughs> <laughs> and she does teach adults. Maybe more one-on-one, -on -one, right? I, I, well, I did classes. I take me to Jungle and Orangeburg. And, and so Orangeburg is in South Carolina, and they have a university there. And um, mm -hmm. did you teach in the public school system? When or I first graduated from college in the early 70s, I did teach in public school in Charleston County. Mm -hmm. And then after that, when I came back to Orangeburg, I moved to teaching at private schools. Mm -hmm. And we have several private schools in Orangeburg. Right, right. Well, um, Joe, I, I've seen Joe's artwork, things that you've actually painted for your own home. I've seen that on your Facebook page. I do paint it in oil on canvas. Of course, I love oil, the painting in oil. And, um, yes, I paint on canvas. Do you ever do portraits, or is that not your thing? It's not my thing. <laughs> <laughs> People who paint portraits have a nap for it, I think. Well, it's interesting that in the world of painting, just like the world of sewing, there are avenues where people excel and love, and other avenues they are just not for them, necessarily. I never thought about it that way. But you obviously excel in what you do. And then the when you had your shop, did you paint on fabric? We did. I did. And this was fabric I had. And I taught a class on painting the rabbit. And if you look behind me, there's the garment. And they see it, you think? Yeah. With the that's the blog I made for myself. Uh, this is a little more involved. It is a quilt. The same painting is here. It just has more detail. So What's I've learned that? acrylic means water-based. Oh, okay. It is water-based. You have to use water-based painting. We can do an over... Oh, there's our overhead. Yeah. Um, and so you do not want to coordinate use. with the fabric. You don't want to use what? Oil paint on fabric. Oh, okay. You cannot use oil on fabric. So at least not this time. So um, what in the world made you put paint on a dress? How did you get there? I, did, I was doing it years ago. You know, 20 or 30 years ago when my girls were in high school, we did painting t-shirts. Do y'all remember when those mm -hmm. were popular? We painted all this stuff on t-shirts for the girls and so I've always done that. I just kind of and then stopped a few years and started back a few years ago. So you have daughters? I have two daughters. Um, one is 48 and the other one's 44, I think. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's what I do. I have to go back to the year they were born and try and figure it out. I have the older dog. I had three children. She had two girls and a boy. They live in Greenville. They're teenagers. And then I have two in Asheville, North Carolina. They're seven and almost two. So did you sew for the grandchildren? I did. And I had a lot of hand-me-downs, some dresses I made for my girls. We passed those down, and mm -hmm. I made more dresses, and so this little almost two-year-old had lots of dresses. Right, <laughs> right. She does. So we have, I, I, I'm, I know I'm going to be all over the place, but when you say something, it triggers me to think, would this have been an, an outfit you made for a grandson? I did. This is for the grandson, this seven years old. Mm -hmm. I made this. I think 
tycker bara får åfära mig detta här. Men övrigt går jag inte in i Kevin King en AG-peng som sköning. Oh, that would be cute. Oh, that would be cute. Oh, but I love that idea. Yeah. But I think the people that sew would be so interested to know what you did to alter this pattern. So this is the children's corner gate I think. And I believe the police were there. I don't know if I added an extra plate, but it was too short. So I had to go back and put the band on to make it longer. But is it, I and love the way Parker, that looks. Is that you know, Parker's pants? I don't know. It could be Parker's pants. This cute little pocket. So in gingham and then, but this is so cute with the band on and, um, and over the years, that's what Joe and I were saying, that patterns, the styles change, and then now we want them maybe a little longer, the tops. It's very easy to lengthen them when you're cutting them out. But once you've cut them out and you think that's too short, this is an awesome alteration. So this is um, actually a, double, a faced fabric band. That's a facing, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so maybe about, let's see, finished. Patty uh, Sanderson says Robert Shorts. Oh, Robert Shorts. Okay, Robert. Okay. Robert. Thank you, and Patty. Katie Hensley says lovely. Isn't that? Yeah, <laughs> lovely. I love that, though. That's so cute with a band because then they can wear it out and it looks finished. It's nice. And see that one, I get it first and it's way too Oh, it short. is short, right? Yeah. Well, that this is a great idea. So... Don't give up if you think, oh my goodness, this is too short. There's always a way to fix it, right? Yeah, I love that. You can't really add a lace to the bottom of that little <laughs> top. <laughs> that was smart to put a band. Or a ruffle. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but I like what you did here on the sleeves. That little, it's like a little band, a bias band, right? It is just a bias, and I think maybe on Costco's sewing may have had a suit that was in black and white, but they did that. Mm -hmm. I may have gotten an idea from that. So it's easy to take an idea from one pattern and transfer it to another one. Mm -hmm. I love that. This is very, very handsome. So what, while we have this here, we might as well talk about your painted, your painted um, pumpkins. I uh, the first thing is I do paint it before I put the garment together in case I messed up mm -hmm. and I can start over. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I do not like to paint something that I've already seen <laughs> for that reason, but I do that. Um, I did a step by step. Good. This is exciting because she's given us her artwork oh, good. to share. So we have a, a, a step by step, and so you'll see how Joe gets started and where it leads to. Okay. Okay. This is a graph I grew, grew up of cherry, mm -hmm. and I just do it in pencil and then make a copy on the copy machine. All right. I'm going to show it to um, Instagram because we can't get an overhead in Instagram. I'm sorry. Okay. This your husband, Jim? Yes. Your husband. Oh. He said, congratulations, Joe. I wish you'd paint and sew something for me. <laughs> <laughs> so her husband's making comments. He can get away with it when he's uh, over there in Orangeburg and you're here. Right? <laughs> I did make him a shirt years ago, and believe it or not, it still fits. It was oh. a shirt. It was, <laughs> it was, you know, 40 years ago. Diane Duane, I think oh, that yes, was her yes, name, yes, had yeah, that pattern yeah. called the Cherokee shirt, uh -huh. and it was my him, the man's pullover, and I made that for him. <laughs> and when I think about it now, I don't, I, I can't believe I made that. <laughs> he wore it a few times, but <laughs> yeah, it wasn't his favorite. <laughs> Well, okay. He was pretty sweet though, right? Yeah. <laughs> I did a lot more when I was younger. <laughs> I'm sure. Okay. 
uh, so you take the pattern, um, you can even use things from a coloring book right. or whatever, crush star, and then take this is imperial broadcloth and really the only thing I paint on. Oh, that's interesting. Um, I'm sure there are other fabrics. Could be that one has a little more space, but oh, oh, you got your center on here though. So you've resized it to fit like a size three bodice, was what you were doing. This is a size three, and you will see where I grew the yoke in the yes. blue. Now you do not want to draw the design in blue in this blue pin because it will bleed out of the line. Right. And then I think the um, textile medium sets it and you just can't do that. I use a number two pencil and I traced off the design on this white broadcloth. I have done it on petite, but I prefer the broadcloth. Mm -hmm. I think it holds up better, but you see it does show through the back. It does. I mean, but so look at all that. Line. There's so much heirloom behind you, and the, the broadcloth looks beautiful. And, it and does. So, so sweet. Anyway, this is the size three, and I crushed it to the dime from that. Um, and I always like to do something on the back. Mm -hmm. And so I, you know, placed this on the back, and I went ahead and finished painting that. So, so what happens here is you shade uh, that in, right? What I did okay. is I outlined the way near the back sheet. Okay. I use acrylic paint, which is water-based. You do need to wet your brush first, but make sure you dry it off, because if you get too much water, it will bleed out, mm -hmm. too. So just wipe it off on a paper towel, and then I like to outline what I'm painting, like I did here, mm -hmm. and then go back and fill in. And you want to use a little tiny brush for that. And then you can, you can even use, I don't recommend this for most people, but you know, you could use the bigger brush, but I would go for something like this. And fill in. And then you go back and put the details in, like the highlight. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's in finish and, here. You know, um, I'm gonna hold this up for Instagram. This is this is the back yoke That's with so the beautiful. finished. It looks printed. It does. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Oh, look how sweet these are. Oh, I love the strawberry. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna hold this up. So you've also sold your wow. your painted garments, right? Is it mm -hmm. is it just like a uh -huh. bodice that you would make with the painting, or you would actually do the whole dress? I do the whole dress. You do the whole dress. Wow. And I've done a lot of these two. That's beautiful. That's so sweet. I do those for someone else. But this is my granddaughter too. Oh. Um now when one thing you can do if you find a pretty print fabric, well you start it with the rabbit. But right. say you have a fabric with strawberries, which I think y'all have had here. And then you could just do the yoke and pick up the color out of the fabric, and that would be pretty mm -hmm. cute. Mm -hmm. I think that would be beautiful. So once you draw your design, you might size it down and size it up That's to make I it do fit do whatever a different size dress. What it, yes, this would be the bigger one, right? And then here but you, you have know, you can. Some people may not like the bigger design. You might prefer something So then smaller. just just size it down and then it then it fits a smaller yoke that's so pretty so when when you paint on a ribbon like with the the ridges and stuff of the ribbon is that it's a little more tricky but i try to keep those simple mm -hmm. and by the way this is ribbon i got from you and i do think you need to use nice ribbon not 
Ich habe dann mit dem Schiffe über in die Kiba in dem Platz. Ich war dann gekommen von hier. Ich bin nicht viel gegangen. Es ist so neat to incorporate your, your talents into sewing. I mean, that is so fun. This is so tiny and delicate. Yeah, well, it's like this. Oh. Oh, look at that. Okay. Maybe I'll slip it off. So this, we're going to go to the overhead here. And so this is painted ribbon down the center. See, I could make this Got a question. Uh, okay. What do you do to set the paint so you can wash the items? I She's like, y'all are jumping out ahead. <laughs> okay, so you could make the thing go. Yes, I love that. that. And, uh, okay. So I'm, I'm, I've got you all over the place, don't <laughs> I? Know. I'm so sorry. I do that all the time. I get so excited. <laughs> you were asking about sewing. I've been sewing since I was five. I learned on the struggle sewing machine that belonged to my great-grandmother. And oh. my father taught me to sew. Oh. My mother did not sew. Oh, wow. But he did. And he grew up in a family that that's definitely yeah. not the norm to be taught by a man to sew. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. So did he sew for you, y'all, your siblings? He did the alterations. Um, I have two brothers, mm -hmm. and he did alterations on their clothes. He hemmed and that kind of thing. Wow. Um, That's neat. Yeah. Huh. You said you're so talented. Your work is amazing. It is. Thank you. I'm just going to show this. So this is the edging right here. A little Swiss edging. And this is simple, y'all. This is uh, Imperial Poly Cotton Microcheck. Throw it in the washer. Throw it in the dryer. Beautiful. And then with, with a little Swiss edging gathered up. And then this. And it's a mess on here, isn't it? And this tiny little, tiny little beading that's connected to the ribbon. And the beading has entredeau on each side. And that's connected to a gathered, the gathered Swiss. That is so sweet. And then all the beautiful work is in the painted ribbon. And this beautiful. is the children's corner towel or the apron dress pattern. Apron I dress. added the plate. Too bad. So when you add pleats to something, you're going to do that before you cut it out, right? Is that what you do? Mm-hmm. I do. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, I may have occasionally taken up always shut, maybe in fire the pleat, but these oh, I right. may go right. over and, you know, on this the other is, side. That's really sweet. Yeah. And it's A-line in the back. This an apron dress by Children's Corner. Very, very pretty. And then these are, um, the little bloomers from Gina Hannah. Oh, cute. So this is from Blue Ribbon Heirloom Designs, the little double-seated panty. Double-seated panty. Uh -huh. Isn't that it? Double-seated panty. Mm -hmm. This is the, this is the cedar end, isn't it? This cute, is the back. Cute. This is the back. I love that. <laughs> isn't that the cedar end? <laughs> Very sweet. Very sweet. So, so where did we get you off track? How, how, how do you really go through your stuff to make it garment ready? Where, it, where someone can actually wear it and the, the paints are set. I think we're right, we're probably on, we're on number step one. two. <laughs> step two. Okay. I've got her way off track. I made this list and I will leave this here if anyone wants to, you know, but I, okay, I use all kinds of paint. This painting, of course, you would not want to buy this unless you were an artist, but this is an artist, but this is my acrylic that I use for painting on canvas. This is the same one. This is Apple Bower. Oh. Paint it, bottle paint it, if you can buy it at Walmart or wherever for less than a dollar, I mm -hmm. think. Mm -hmm. And they have a lot of colors, but I use this. I just use what I have on hand. And then this is another kind of paint. So it's just regular acrylic paint? 
all equipment has to be water -based. I do not use, I have bought the fabric pins that you can buy, but they never work because the colors were not right. Most of them are too bright, kind of neon, mm -hmm. bright mm -hmm. colors, and I, I never mm -hmm. liked those. They would be easier, but it would be hard to find the right color. But what you have to have, if you use this paint, is what we call textile medium. So do you like a certain brand? This came from Hobby Lobby. This is a textile medium. Mm -hmm. And so... I just buy whatever I... Well, this is probably the only one I've used. Okay. Yeah, and this, you shake it up. Well, actually, you need to shake the bottle paint up, too. Um, I don't know if you can... By the way, I recycle these I do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you on that. <laughs> but that's the textile medium right there. Oh, I can what see it's kind of glossy. See, that's what it looks uh -huh. like. Oh, okay. It, you don't need a lot, but you can make both mix your paint for whatever color you want, a lighter blue, and then you pick up a little bit of this to mix in with the paint. This oh. is what makes it so you can paint on fabric. You have to have this, otherwise it will wash out. And I have tried that. Mm -hmm. It washes mm -hmm. out mm -hmm. or it fades. So you do mm -hmm. need this for fabric. So so you start by mixing your colors to the color you want. Mm -hmm. And then you what you dip pick your brush in here and you pick up and then and just okay. mix in okay. with it. But you don't want to get it too watery because, you know, it will bleed yeah. outside. So even after I mix it and pick up a little bit of this, I also just tap it on a paper towel to make sure there's not a lot of water. Mm -hmm. I suggest you experiment on another oh, piece right, of right, right. before you do it. On That's a good idea. You know, <clears throat> this would be cute on hair bows, too. You could do hair bows... I had yeah. pain in hair bows. Yeah. I forgot about that. When my two older, older granddaughters, they're 15 and 13, mm -hmm. I just paint hair bows for them. I think that'd be sweet. You I want to know how you made it here without paint on you. I feel like I would be covered <laughs> in paint if I ever touched anything with paint. A lot paint. of my clothes have paint oh, on them. Oh, they do? And <laughs> I have learned, I, I can get acrylic out. Mm -hmm. Um, and I learned to do that when I was teaching, when kids would get the paint on them. Oh, yeah. Oh, you right. wet it right away and right. wash it or put something on it and you can get it out. It's the oil paint that you cannot mm -hmm. get out. So I have clothes with oil paint yeah. on them. <laughs> Did you say you mixed that with the paint? Put a little bit of it on, it doesn't take a lot. I wouldn't do a lot. And just a small amount of paint. You don't want to waste, you know, a lot of paint, but you have to mix it with this. Do you have a preference of paintbrushes? You want to look small brush like this, definitely. And you can get those in most art supply stores. You need something in these sizes to kind of fill in. We definitely will get a picture mm -hmm. up close of those mm -hmm. to show you all the sizes. And this is a one four. Can't make that one out. Zero, maybe. A zero. Um, one thing I did want to say before I forget, um, what I told my girls when I made these clothes is do not put them in the dryer. Now you probably can put them in the dryer. We used to put the t-shirts in the dryer, um, but they don't really like to iron, so if they just wash them in cold water and you can use a delicate cycle of cold water and then hang them up to dry. That's what we did. When, <clears throat> after you've painted, and you've used your medium and your paints, and it dries. Do you press it? You yes, must. I do. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now put that on here. Okay. You want to flip it over. And by the way, see the paint it does bleed through. And I like to line my thing. Mm -hmm. I have something mm -hmm. lined. 
Um, they want to know if you use a light box to copy the pattern on the fabric. I don't even have none. <laughs> 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 no, I always have light boxes. But I think it's because I've painted on canvas so much. I just, oh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you can use a light box. But if you get your line dark enough, you can stay through it. Mm -hmm. uh, turn this to the wrong side. You can put a pressing cloth on top and just get that iron down on it for about 15 to 20 seconds. And then take it off. Mm -hmm. And that heat stuff. On the wrong side. On this. Back side. Yeah. No steam. No steam. A dry iron. Um, when we did the t-shirts and sweatshirts, we would, what we did with those was put them in the dryer for 20 minutes, and that's how we get those, but I prefer the iron there. Mm -hmm. So, and once that's done, if you're going to press a garment that's painted, are you doing it from the underneath? Or would I wouldn't you, iron you would not iron it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I get, well, I don't. I usually try not to iron it. I turn it to the wrong side. Mm -hmm. But if you use the broadcloth, the imperial broadcloth, you don't have to iron I mean... Well, that's true because it's a poly it polyester and cotton blend. Pretty much wrinkle-free, right? Yeah. That's Much's right. I know. I'm going to pull... I want to pull some things forward. I'm going to set this over that way. Oh, well, I have another question. Okay. How do you keep the painted area from being stiff? She just tuned in, so she's asking that question. Oh, well, we didn't we didn't talk about that anyway. It's a little bit stiff, but it's not. It is a little bit, but it would be if you I didn't use, if you just you painted can. directly on this and not want didn't want to wash it or use this. You could do that, but you wouldn't be able to wash it. I believe it would be stiffer or harder. I think oh. this softens it. Mm. Where do you want me to start? Oh, wherever. They're beautiful. <laughs> this is, I know. Well, I'll start here. Because this is from a recent Connie Palmer. That slip pattern. That from that white dress that was on the front of the uh, classic sewing magazine. Now, the strap, of course, is bigger, bigger armhole, so I pulled the pattern up and took off probably a half to a three-fourths of an inch off the top oh, so mm -hmm. that it wouldn't be too low. Yeah. But then this, is this handmade from your family? Did you do my, it? I did not do tagging. My grandmother and great-grandmother did tagging and all of this. I'm out and be happy on right. from what they made. And then my That's husband, so I know. My I husband's that. grandmother who lived in Oklahoma would make tagging for my girls and mail it to me every few weeks. Every few she weeks? <laughs> if I, I every few weeks I might have a piece this and this long, right? I still have a lot of tagging oh. that they made. I you know That's and then my, wonderful. Um I wanna show the details of that. Yeah. It's so so yeah. beautiful. I mean, all of it. It's just like a. Pr it looks printed. It's so right. perfect. Right. See, we're gonna. Okay, we're going to the overhead, and I'm gonna slide these right here. How are we? Good. Yeah. But look at that tatting. That's beautiful. I love that. This. All right. So here is it's lined. So the back is all completely covered, and here she has her. Oh, I love that The touch. little detail, the touch of a, a little... I always like I to put that. a little something on the back. That's sweet. And these little sleeveless dresses are... They're sweet, aren't they? They are. I they love this from Connie. Made. This is a Connie Palmer pattern from Classic Sewing Magazine. Is it spring? Spring, spring this year? Spring, spring this year, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it comes with the magazine. I love that. Loving it. Gorgeous. So beautiful. I know. It's really sweet. I know this is not painted, but you have to show that green dress. I know. That's what I'm it's, having there it's next. It's stunning. All right. So now, Joe, you, you have you have a stash at your house. <laughs> <laughs> I have a stash, and my girls want me to 
get ready to come out of it because they don't, neither one of them stay. Oh my they goodness. They do well in their jobs and everything, but they never took that stone. Oh. I mean, this I think was a Swiss. Don't you think that was a Swiss well, insertion? Well, it felt maybe? like they had a little bit of nylon. Oh, maybe it was nylon. I don't know. Okay, we're. This is our recent bobinet. Mm -hmm. So cute, but look at how perfect. This was from My when you were a child. Your grand. Okay, so did you have something when you were a child? I had a dress. She made me a dress that I wore for my fourth birthday party. Made out of it. Oh, this is a plissé, yeah. and I told Joe I, I can remember my mother talking about um, how excited they were when they came out with nylon fabrics because they didn't wrinkle. And do you remember any of the nylon dotted Swiss? I can remember how it smells. Oh, I have a piece. Oh, do you? <laughs> I think I have a piece. Yeah, that. yeah. But they're this not, is. Go ahead. They're not real big pieces, mm -hmm. but. She had got up when she passed away. They were boxes of fabric. So this is the Sophia by Bonnie Blue. Oh, there mm -hmm. we go. That's right. I love that pattern. It's I think so we cute. have it right over under here. Yes. Here we go. Sophia by Bonnie Blue. And I can bring it right down here. There we go. That was such a great pattern choice. Yes. It is. And that's what this is. Oh. That too, maybe, because it's mm -hmm. got a square this neck. One too. Yeah. That's wow. definitely one we promote. We love that. Yes, we do love this. Mm -hmm. The nice thing is, it also it has a round neck as well as a square neck. It's wonderful, wonderful pattern. Sophia by Bonnie Blue, and it it goes from six months to ten years, all in the same in the same package. So you did you finish the the hem of the uh -huh. nylon? How did you, how did you address that? I. No, I'm sorry. Of the, oh, the, oh, the bobbinet. The bobbinet. Um, yeah. I didn't know what to do, and I did. It took me a while to figure out to do the sleeve, the double. Oh, this is the and folded part. How yeah, cute is and that? And I just cut that. Right. Here, I tried to do a good gag on the machine, and I was going to hem it, but I didn't like the way it looked. Mm -hmm. So I just, I'm going to cut it off to match mm -hmm. the hem. Well, I, I love this, and I love it that it's longer. I, I do, too. Actually, I like this. I think, it's it's yeah, I, I think it's pretty that way. I don't think you can go wrong. No, this you, point, you it's can't. Such a great right. Dress. So this is really, it's like a little rolled hem, but she just zigzagged, right? Just a zigzag. Same thing you do when you get heirlooms going. Yeah. And I do love to get heirlooms going. <laughs> I didn't bring my heirloom garment, but I like that, too. Well, you'll have to you'll have to come back with those. Uh, yeah. This is I love I love what you did here by just folding this in half, and then this is mm -hmm. this is the. That was my inspiration. Oh, okay, okay. So this is her inspiration. Look at that. What, sleeve. what issue is that? It's so beautiful. From two thousand seven. I kept it and I always loved that it. That is pretty. Perfect like that. Oh my goodness. I see they hemmed it. Look at that. that. Okay, yeah. look at the back. And so this was a wider insertion with embroidery and just she just folded the and you looks like you hand stitched that all the way around. I did. Both edges. Mm hmm And you could do um I mean you have a lot of instruction and all that. With what? The mm -hmm. That is sweet. Get my little. S this is going to be cute on somebody. Mm -hmm. Well, it's for my granddaughter. Well, my dog, I love green. Sweet. So the little one will eventually grow well, into it. We have an Instagram comment. Yes, please come back with heirloom garment. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I love that. All right, since kids are in, back in school now, right? <laughs> <laughs> this, I was experimenting on this. That's cute. And it, this is one I keep telling her I think it's so cute and I love it. And she's like, eh. Oh, you, you just <laughs> asked. I the love that. The way I thought it was huge when I was making it. But I think it's supposed to it, It's got like a drop that. shoulder, right? It's just the way. So this is a simplicity pattern S8964. 
That's so cute. Now, they don't have, see, this is your own idea to put the patch pockets on, right? I did, and I even get these oh. down so you could put paint on. Oh, oh my so goodness. Cute. Well, Look at that's that. Too big, but, that's all right, but it, I didn't see it. Yeah. That was the idea. Oh, um, I love it. I mean, how creative is this? I'll get up closer here. So my granddaughter's name is Lena. Oh. So when you're with your grandchildren, have they painted on fabric and you've made things up for them, or no? They haven't painted on fabric. I always get a little bit of art with all mm -hmm. of them. You know, different crafts yeah. and different things. This is cute. So are you still making those painted t-shirts? Yes. <laughs> I did not like, this is much easier than painting on t-shirts. I like to do that with my girls. I mean, t-shirts were aggravating to paint on, I think, but we, That's probably because you, know, you, that's because you can actually paint. <laughs> Mine looks junky, but I still like my kids in them, it's funny. <laughs> Well, we did, um, you know, the Christmas shirt with the tree, and they mm -hmm. were cute oh, yeah. and everything, mm -hmm. but they're harder to paint on. That, even, huh? This is cute. This is the Jane from Children's Corner. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So here, here we have. That is so cute. A little, let's go down here with the paintbrush. And that of course, is adorable. I completely lying. We're sitting on the pad. Oh, I and see that. And, and the lining is the lining is loose on the pad. But um, I love that. I don't like. I want to line it, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So I did this. And I always think I have trim. I always put trim on just about everything I made. Look at that, sweet. So then the trim on the little lining. Lining acts like a slip. So did. This I did not line three. Yeah, you wouldn't need to do that. But you did do French seams on all of these. And they're teeny yeah, tiny, even with all that lining. Too. My goodness. I tried to use French seams you know, most of the time. This is so adorable. I love that idea. And Dickie got three, two, and she is smaller. It is. Than the other. Yeah. It is. Well, how cute is that? I love this. Oh my goodness. That's so fun. Oh, look at here. I need to always turn it around and look at the back. So here's a little paint brush with a little drips of paint. That is cute. Oh my goodness. Oh. All right, now where are we next? I want that birthday one. The little balloons up at the top right. I know, but I might need a... Um, Long, my long-handled reacher to reach it, or my long-handled Kristen reacher yeah, that, yeah, to reach it. Her, reach it. <laughs> I love that, and maybe the one below it with the, yeah. And I'll give you this. Okay, so here comes the birthday outfit. It's adorable. Yeah, this is, and I've done this for other people. Um, but this is the uh, baby. Lifetime sweat for their first birthday. Mm -hmm. This is a 12 month Bible from. Um, I'm going to say not Cherry Williams, right? Because you might have had some Cherry Williams patterns. Cherry Williams Michy. is the one that makes the real full Bible. Mm -hmm. This is the one that's the pattern that this big. It's a Michy, I think. Is it Michy? That's it. Michy? Mm -hmm. that's it. So Creations by Michy are all downloadable now. I think she's on Etsy and she has all PDF patterns and she had a lot of bubble choices. And I have all the mm -hmm. patterns. Mm -hmm. I mean, I bought them new I'm going to hold it up for Instagram so you can see how sweet that little design is. And look at, look at that little back. So cute. So you said you had made um, one year garments for all your grandchildren, like with a cake design. I think it's over there. Oh, here we um, usually they would wear something I made. The um, apples were Luna's first birthday. Oh, we had to get the apple orchard in Asheville, North Carolina. That's 
That's a cute and idea. Go here, I made all of them a bib. But they're both, both. Let me slide it this way. Let me slide it down just a little bit. And you Aww. can see I grew off of your dime with the cake. Right. And on name, I couldn't, I don't think I have any of the bibs with me. And then they're both gay. That's I mean, a cute both idea. Both uh huh. Aww. And here's another one from a. Uh, so I'm going to hold this little design up and then this one. So when you're adding in that second color, that's the second step. You've let the first layer completely dry and then you're coming back to do like highlights on top of it. I do. Um, and you're, are you not setting in between? Like you're, you're painting I every know. color. I painted the whole thing. And you know, sometimes I'll go back. You know, and think it's too light, and I'll go back and add more detail, like the balloons mm -hmm. on top, like mm -hmm. that. You want to see a close-up of the balloons? Of the balloons? Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's do this. How pretty is that? I have also got a name. Oh, yeah, there's room in there for a name. I love that. Very, very pretty. So if you're not portrait, are, are you a landscape oil canvas painter? I like love to paint landscapes and flowers. Mm -hmm. I do both. Mm -hmm. And I have painting. So you Got said this is the wall at home. Oh yeah. So, <laughs> so you said that um, the, the rabbit was more intricate. Like what, what kind of intricacies have you put on a garment? Like it, Well that's probably the most detailed. Mm -hmm. That I've done um, oh, something really, that, really yeah. sweet here. And here's this is the most simple version. I know, but it's a oh look! Oh my goodness! I didn't know you had a whole stack of pretties under here. Well, okay. Oh. Talking about the fabric, <laughs> you need to. I keep my if I cut painting on a piece of fabric from. You know, I don't want to mix them because the color, the dialogues are not the same. Like, you need to keep it together, what you cut it oh, from. Even the white. Even and the white. On and then go back and do the sleeve, the collar, or whatever you're going to do. Because I have, one time I made a dress and I painted on one piece of imperial and then pulled out another piece and cut the sleeves and I could definitely tell the difference. We have seen that too over the years when we get a, mm -hmm. a new bolt of white broadcloth it might have a different color cast to it. Right. That's really true. I never thought about those saving. So that's why that I is a it. very good very good advice. A few years ago I did a number of dresses like this for um, Elizabeth Lane Allen. Mm -hmm. That is, that is so sweet, cute. sweet. And I'm gonna, we're gonna go to yeah. overhead on this so you can see how precious that is. Look at that. I oh wanna my. know if you paint, paint before you cut out the pattern. I do. I draw it on like I did on here. I like to draw it on so I know where I, where I am to get it centered. You notice I mark the center front. There we go. I mark the center front yeah. on mm -hmm. here mm -hmm. and I mark the center front on there. Right. That way you measure from here to here and here to here to get the design centered. That would be so sweet on blankets too. Like I could see I like a the same coming thing. home blanket. Mm -hmm. or, that would I mean, be. That would and I probably a long time ago had done blankets. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes I do things for gifts, baby gifts. Um, that was a dress I just never finished. Oh, I think I actually sweet. thought it was too big. Oh, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> it's perfect. <laughs> that's beautiful. Oh my goodness, that's beautiful. Put that I, I'll put on the I love your colors. Your colors are just like sweet and nice and perfect. Yeah. Well, I do mix colors. To get the color you want? 
But that's where bottle painting can be an advantage for beginners because you can get these in so many colors right. that you cannot right. get this kind of painting. Yeah. But see, we mix these paintings mm -hmm. on canvas. But you can get all shades of red, pink, blue, and you don't have to mix it up. I don't want to get these mixed up, so I'm going to try and get... I'll try to go ahead and show okay. this. I don't have Ooh, this I, I, I made this for friends, little girl, and I couldn't get the dress back. Well, it was complex. But anyway, you notice I did, I made up the tab. Mm -hmm. You can do that, and I have the little girl's name here, and then I think this is Gail Jones, where I got this design mm -hmm. from, that's in gorgeous. And then she, she can wear Christmas. So how do they, do they snap on? They, they have little snap snaps up underneath snap the collar? up under here. Great. Wow. Cute, cute. I love that. This was one of the cute, I really love this, and I would like to do this to my granddaughter. I'm going to show you on Instagram. Um, so this, you can make detachable tabs and painted for different. You said you just you just came up with that tab. I mean, it was totally. I added do on. it all freehanded, but I think there is a pattern that has a tab that's more round. Mm -hmm. I'm oh, not sure. I've seen. Like I've yeah. seen something, and they look a little more round, mm -hmm. maybe. Lizette. Lizette has a. Oh, Lizette. A, 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 oh, okay. A rounder collar. Tab. Yeah. Now I'm going to show. Th there's no painting on this, but there, but there's a lot of handwork on this, isn't there? When you mentioned Gail Doan, I mean Gail does yeah. lots of those little uh, bullion mm -hmm. flowers. So look how sweet this is, and this is all Imperial Microcheck. So this light, yeah, we did have it at one time. Yeah, well, I, I think, think I had it a while. We, but I think we still have it, and so so, so sweet, easy to take care of, right? Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. You can just wash that. So here, maybe we'll do a close up of right because you can tell us what you did here on the um uh, that's just the, the bouillon rose and then I get a feather stitch on top of well on the side of the leg. That's sweet. I'm pretty sure I put the leg down first and just whipped it down mm -hmm. by hanging and then did all this. The lace gives that dress such an airy feel. It does. I, I like that. Yeah. And then, of course, this. And oh, right, this right. And right. I use. Yeah. It works like a little beading. Uh, right. But it's I think ribbon. it was a little Swiss Clooney that we had with a, with a, like a mm -hmm. zigzag kind of effect. Really, really sweet. Now, I'm, I mean, I love this so much. I can't believe I haven't pulled it out here because I have, I'm always like, what about this? This is so pretty. Oh, so I can't wait to show you this, but you're going to have to wait a minute <laughs> because Joe has painted this ribbon as part of our giveaway. So it's a Christmas, Christmas design on a grow grain. Mm -hmm. Hope you're entered by now because yeah. it's too late. Yeah, <laughs> so somebody who entered our giveaway is going to win this painted, hand painted. You should have signed it down there somewhere. You know, I have tried to do that, but it's hard to get my name that time. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. I, yeah. But show them what you did with this because it's okay. the same idea. Yeah, but did, how did. awesome is that? Oh, look, I, you did something I on the tail. Probably two yards, mm -hmm. I would think. I was going to put this on a basic yoke dress, mm -hmm. like um, Louise or mm -hmm. something that comes mm -hmm. a little bit to the way. Throw this beading on and then run this through. So it's a wide beading, Swiss beading, embroidered with scalloped edges. But look what, so... I love the, the way you did. See, I did it on the edge of the ribbon. I mean, it needs to be cut, right. but you can tie a bow in the back. So it's a sash. You've created this gorgeous sash. That's so pretty. So, so what she did is run the ribbon through, just like you would normally do. But then this would be the center front, 
where you don't run the ribbon through the beading at that part and so then that stays right right here on the center and it just creates a gorgeous look you wouldn't need anything else on the whole garment no, you I mean wouldn't. you could you could put it on a you could put it on a blue gingham yeah and have a just that. a blue gingham dress I'll and the number so it's oriented okay directly because I'm maybe a velvet oh a velvet that would be oh pretty. I love that idea Wow. Well, I think the ribbons, that might be pretty young. This would be pretty. And they could do the same thing with this, run this through. And then if you want to take it out and bring another piece yeah. of ribbing in a mm -hmm. color for Christmas oh. or whatever, you could do red ribbon or whatever. Wow. Yeah, the yeah. versatility of that is neat. Mm -hmm. That's pretty. I love that. So this is, a, this is on a polyester grow grain. And so when, yeah. so when you, you just have to watch your, your temperature of your iron when you're ironing things, mm -hmm. but you would still use a pressing cloth behind it, I think, don't you? I would. Do you put a towel down or something down on your ironing board when you press, or do you have I one? I have my iron board covered. Okay. And, and you don't have, ever worry about the paint coming off? And no, I don't, but now I will say this. I do let it dry overnight. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you asked that. When I paint it, I let it dry overnight before I heat set it with the iron. Mm -hmm. Wow. You make it sound so easy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think you have to be an artist. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I could buy all these things, but I... I couldn't make it look that beautiful. When it's in my head, it doesn't come out in, through I my... <laughs> but I think we have some people that are watching that have that artistic ability. And we had a lot of people say that they were very interested to learn how to get started, how to go about it. So I hope that we've gotten, gotten them ready to... One says, yeah. can you show a close-up of the big bottle of um, paint? I think she's talking about the medium. So it's Delta Creative Textile Medium. And this came from Hobby Lobby. I feel sure Walmart and art supply stores mm -hmm. would probably mm -hmm. have it too. Mm -hmm. There we go. And there are other brands. Um, so not expensive. And when she bought it, it was five ninety nine. This is a big. It would probably last a It'll long last, time. Oh yeah. It, you don't have to use a lot of mm -hmm. this. If you use too much, it's gonna run. Mm -hmm. So if you do, if you were painting a t-shirt, which is something I might would do, mm -hmm. you would also use this same. Incorporate that into the paint as well. Now years ago, when you can buy, and I have not looked. In a few years, you used to put buy fabric paint back years ago when we were doing those tea trucks. But I have not seen those lately. And the ones I have seen, like the pin, are odd colors. We have, we have, bright. yeah, we have bought the pins because the kids were interested. And for them, it was kind of easy, you know. But, oh, yeah. but to get the colors that you are using... Made. Yeah, right. yeah. See, those are really are pretty. Easy. I mean, the pen you can just outline and fill in, and they're actually easier than the brush. Mm -hmm. But I just don't like the color. Right, right. Yeah. Wow. All right, we have a drawing. Let's see who's going to be our winner here today. So we mm -hmm. we have a drawing for a lot of Christmas things because. <laughs> Because it's hot, because it's hot here, and we're all thinking about winter, right? <laughs> but anyway, because Joe so graciously has donated this to go in our drawing, then Emma said, "Hey, let's do Christmas." So, so we had like a assortment of more than a hundred Christmas buttons, all kinds of Christmas That's buttons, awesome. yeah, <laughs> and <laughs> fabric and Christmas ribbons and things like that. And so, um, I just have to say this. The question um, Emma asked was, if you have a family tradition or a holiday tradition, it didn't have to be Christmas, but I mean, we had the most interesting answers. And um, a couple of people talked about a Christmas bingo game. And so we actually, they said how much fun it was that they all play a Christmas bingo game now. 
I think one of them said 30 years ago their mother or father came home with it and and that became a tradition so we're thinking we're gonna today Emma looked up on, on Amazon Christmas bingo and I'm thinking we might have to do it for our our um, staff party here because it sounds like a whole lot of fun but anyway we love your ideas thank you so much for sharing your lives really when you when you um, when when you put these stories in here it's so interesting if you have time you might want to I feel like we should write a book you know we need to write a book and put all this stuff down because it's so interesting one person was like me I don't really have any <laughs> My Christmas tradition was I was sewing for people up to the very end. Customers were picking their garments up on Christmas Eve and that kind of thing. So when you sew for people, it's like, I'm gonna, it, it, it's busy, uh, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Would you like to, to draw an in? Let's see who we got. Oh, it's going to be Teresa Miller. <clears throat> Teresa Miller, what a great giveaway to get everyone in the Christmas spirit. Each kid I receives an ornament that's theirs to keep. We have Christmas pajamas every year. I make candy, bacon, and monkey bread Christmas morning to eat after the gifts are done. Oh, that sounds really good. Now I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> but I hadn't ever heard of candied bacon. I have. You I have? Think. Yeah. Brown sugar, maybe. Oh, wow. oh, yeah. I bet that's it. I've never made it. But. So, Teresa Miller is our winner, and we will be contacting you. And we want to thank you, Joe, so much for coming. I hope you come you're back. Welcome. Come back with yeah. some. You're going to have to go digging for those trains, you know, because those are pretty cute. Mm -hmm. In my mind, I can picture it. And then your heirloom, some of your heirloom things would be very fun. But Joe is a member of the of our local Smocking Arts Guild, and um, so Regina is here supporting her and her friend Amy, and and um, she has a little a little audience today. Yay! <laughs> and your husband, your husband, yeah. So many wonderful comments. People oh, talking good. about how talented you are. That's great. All right. So thank you very much, and we will see you Tuesday. It's Friday. today, Friday, Friday. Today's Tuesday. We'll see you Friday. Man, what day is it? I don't even know what.